everybody. Welcome to um, Fab Fit Friday. I am trying to link, um, trying to link our live stream into the group, my, our new Facebook group too, just in case. So I'm just gonna get that going here. It's my first time trying to do this. I want to see if it's doing it. Hi, Diane. Hi, Mary. Hi, Janie. Hi, Diane. Hi, Susie. Welcome, everybody. I'm just, okay, so I did put, whoops. I did put in our group, I just want to show you. So in our group, you can see here, I'm live in our group. So you can either watch from Facebook or you can watch from my YouTube. Um, I think that's the way I'm going to run these um, Fab Fit Fridays. Today what I wanna do is show you how to line the crotch for your shorts, um, for your skirt. Now, this method of lining is not like a built-in gusset like you would see in ready to wear um, this is a gusset that i created uh, tracing it off of my shorts pattern and then we're going to sew along the edges of the gusset and it will the sewing will show through on the right side of the shorts so really this version is for something that's going to be under a skirt unless you don't like that bicycle short look where you've got you know how bike shorts have those um, padding in the crotch and you can see the stitching through it's gonna kind of be like that yay Sally's here all right so Sally was the one who wanted to know how to do this and honestly um, I should have probably showed this when I did the swim skirt class so and I also want to say that I have shown this in the past um, let me just switch my view here Okay, so here's my pattern, okay? And you can see I've got these little um, shapes traced out on my shorts. That's when I figured out how to create this type of a, a lining the first time and I shared it in my original Facebook group. So, excuse me, I'm sorry. If anybody is watching this and they already know how to do it because I showed you many moons ago, I'm sorry, but I just thought it'd be fun to show it again and I am in and I am in the process of using these random pieces of paper that I salvaged from different things that I got printed because I'm trying not to throw away paper so I'm trying to be a little bit um, just a little bit uh, paper usage conscious so the first thing I'm going to do here is let me just explain what I did in the front I measured up approximately two inches and in the back, I measured approximately four inches, between three and a half and four inches along the crotch curves. And then I basically just made a gentle curved line that went from the crotch curves down to the hem. Oh, wait a minute, we have some friends, Diane. The two Dianes um, are close to each other and they, they might wanna get together. I think that's wonderful. Um, in Virginia. That's kind of cool. Susie Berry is from Palm Harbor, Florida. And both of our Dianes are currently in Woodbridge, Virginia. So that's kind of fun. I'm sorry, I'm yawning. Um, I had a late night last night. All right, so the first, so I just want to make sure everybody understands how I created the shape. I measured about two inches up from here to here, and then I basically just drew a curved line going down. And I did the same thing in the back. Okay, so I've got my, you know, for about four inches here and down. Now here's the thing, you can customize how much coverage you want for your lining 
too. Okay, so that's the first thing you need to do. And I would just draw it or design it right on your skirt shorts from your skirt pattern. Um, and then you'll always have the master. Um, and if it doesn't work out exactly perfect, you can always um, change it. All right. Hi, Andrea. Welcome. Okay, so what I'm going to do here is I'm going to trace these two shapes. These two shapes. All right, so I'm just going to use this big paper I have. I'm trying to use my scraps, and I'm just going to trace this like this. So this is the shape I drew on my front leg or my front crotch area. This is my inseam. I'll just write inseam here. And this is front. And this is, oops. Just. I'm just finish tracing this here. And actually, this paper is kind of heavy, so I'm having trouble seeing through. So actually, make sure I'm tracing it accurately. Actually, it needs to go to here. All right, so this is my front. Okay, and then I'm going to do the same thing over here. I'm going to trace my back. Alright, so now I've got these two pieces. So this is my this is my back and this is my inseam. Okay, so that's what my two pieces look like. Okay. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut them out. Like this. Sally, let me know if this is making sense to you, what I'm doing so far. So far I have my front and back pieces. Okay. And what I'm going to do here is, okay, so here, this is my back, and this is my front. Let me make it a little bit bigger. So you can see. Okay. So this is my back, this is my front, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to sort of dash in a seam allowance um, along one inseam, and I'm going to cut that off, okay? Because what I want to do is I want to connect these at the inseam. And you can see they don't match up perfectly because they're curved. Let me just draw my seam. That's my stitching line for my front. All right, so what I'm going to do here is I'm actually going to cut into the center of my back so I can line these up. So I'm lining the cut edge up with the trim, the, um, the, the allowance that I drew. And basically I'm just gonna overlap it at the center to make it match. Oh, and I think I'm running out of tape here. So let me put this piece of tape here. Okay, so now what I've done is I've sort of created a single piece. And just to show you, the one that I did first look like this. So you can see I've done them two times now, and they're very similar. Okay, so I'll just use this one because it's actually neater than this one. But they basically came out the same. So I've got my back crotch, my front crotch, and this over here is my hem edge. I just want to sort of show you what it is. So the next thing I did was I took a piece of paper and I folded it in a way where it would be big enough to, tr 
trace on the fold like this. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to touch the center um, there. So I'm going to lose these little parts here, these little parts that curve up, I'm going to lose that. Um, but basically what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut it out. I'll just cut it out so I can show you what it looks like here. Now, it doesn't need to be the exact shape that we trace off the pattern because it's knit and it will stretch. Okay, so basically now what I have here is, this is my full pattern, okay, and this right here, that's going to be lined up with the, um, line up with crotch seam. Okay, in the middle. Hi, Judy. Welcome. I'm showing how to make a lined crotch for your short shorts underneath your skirt. Okay, and then the other thing I want to take from here is I just want to also line up my I'm going to make a little line where the Oh, actually, it's right here. Okay, so this right here is approximately where the inseam is. Okay, and it goes to where it divots like that. Okay, so that's what our, our um, lining for our crotch looks like. And again, you can play with the outer shape of this. I'm going to show you how this is going to work out for us. Um, I have some... I cut it out of some fabric already, and I've sewn some shorts already, so let me just show you what I have here. So, all right, let me just show you. So the, this, is, um, a, this is a vintage knit from Joanne Fabrics, like back in the day, like a long time ago. And what I'm going to use this for is I'm going to use this to be um, some sh s like sleep shorts. Oops, sorry. Let me just make it so you can see. Okay, so this is going to be, you know, these are going to be like pajama bottom shorts. Okay, so I don't care that I'm going to, the stitching is going to show. Um, and here is the piece that I cut out using this pattern piece here, like this. Okay, so there's our. Um, pattern piece and what we're going to do here is I'm going to fold it in half and I'm going to mark that fold because that's where the um, that's where the crotch is going to go and I'm going to use a wonder clip here and I'm going to use a wonder clip over here Okay, so that's, that's going to line up with the crotch, and then if I fold it in half and actually just line up my, you know, where the divot is on my hem, the, the back hem is a little bit bigger than my front hem, I'm just going to put a clip there too. So that's where one inseam is going to be, and here's where the other inseam is going to be. So here's what we're going to do, just to make it, um, okay, just to make it different. Now the inside of my shorts are plain white, so what I can do here is I can put, you know, if I want to put the, the plain white side against the white, I think I'm going to do that so it's all white inside. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to pin my, you know, where the um, inseam goes down here on either side. Like this.
you know, and I can tell that my back is the back because that edge is curved deeper. So you can see here, actually, you know, I think that's hard for you to see, so I'm going to flip it around so you can tell what's what. All right, so this is, this print is going to be my lining. Okay, and I'm going to line that back up with my inseam. So the nice thing is your inseams are going to be encased between the two layers of fabric, so that's another thing. It'll be less irritating, especially if this is for a swimsuit. Sally, are you following along with me? Let me know if you're if you're following along with this, or if anybody else um, is following along with this. I just want to make sure everybody understands what I'm doing. Okay, so you can see here, I've created this lining piece here. So what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to, I can't use Wonder Clips for this because obviously we're pinning something within the garment. So I'm going to just put some pins here and I'm just going to pin this curved edge, which is the back part of the lining. And this is the back of the shorts. And I'm just going to pin it so it matches. And you can see, even though we cut off those tips of the crotch, I'm talking about like we trimmed this off a little bit, you can see it still stretches and matches here. Okay, so from the crotch center back seam down to the hem, that still matches up. So I'm just going to stick some pins like this. And I was going to finish it with um, a like a three thread narrow on the serger first and then I realized I'm just going to keep it real simple and I'm just going to sew it with um, the triple zigzag on my sewing machine. You can also do this if you have a cover hem on your serger if you'd like to you know cover hem it you can but just to keep it simple I'm going to use my triple zigzag because that will finish the edge and it will also um, it'll finish the edge and it will also um, sew it to the shore itself. Okay, so see this is what the front looks like. And again, I'm just going to start at the center here where that clip was. And I'm just going to pin it on. And I just want to make sure that it's, you know, pinned flat, meaning the fabric underneath, it's all one-to-one -one here. So I'm just going to pin it there. And then I'm just going to pin the edges. And you can see this would not really work if you were making shorts, um, you know, like exercise shorts or yoga pants. This wouldn't be fabulous because, you, like I said, we're going to see this stitching. Unless you don't care about the stitching, which... You can make, you can use your um, cover hem and then you'd have the reverse cover hem on the right side of the garment and it would look sporty, I guess. But um, the other thing that this is going to do for you is it's going to create a second layer of fabric to prevent like your legs from chafing. Um, and it will also support the fabric in, on the inner thigh as well. So. There are some pluses to doing this in addition to creating a lining. Okay, so here we have our pinned on lining. And you can see it fits fairly well. And I think when it's on, it will all stretch and be, um, you know, be good once it's on. So that's how it looks um, with it. like that. Um, all right, and then we're just going to triple zigzag it on for this one. I'm looking at this and I'm wondering if I could have put it right sides together, sewed it and flipped it down, um, which I might have been able to, but I think this is just the real easy way to do it and I, it will get the mission of lining the crotch um, all 
Okay, so Gary is asking, do you pin everything at once before you sew, or do you just do half of it, then the other half? Well, that's what I was just looking at, Gary. I was thinking to myself, if I had pinned um, one half, but pinned it so it was right side against the wrong side, and then flipped it this way, then the seam would be encased. But I just think that's almost going to be too much trouble than it's worth for this kind of thing. This is just one down and dirty, easy way to do it. I would pin everything down because then you're going to know that, like, I can see that the fabric is laying smoothly front to back, um, and I've got my edge laid out where it needs to be. Um, and that way, once I start sewing, I don't have to fuss around with anything. Well, maybe let's turn it right side out and look at how it looks, how the shorts look with it pinned. All right, so you can see everything is laying nice and smooth from the right side, too. Um, Sally says, I just got an order for fabric with a new spandex print for the skirt and tankini and some polyester swimmer lining called Sport Tech. So we'll see how this works when I put together. Oh, and Mary says sewing it like, sewing it on like you have, um, you will help with the bulk in that area. Yeah, that's true too. I was trying to keep it flat, and that's why I didn't finish the edges of the knit on the serger first, because the knit isn't going to fray. All right, so let's get the sewing machine over here. And I think, let me just switch to gray. I'm going to use gray thread so you can see it. I'm using my um, built-in walking foot on this machine um, because then my layers of knit are not going to push each other. Um, Okay. All right, so I'm going to um, just thread my needle here. And what we're going to do is I am going to um, choose my Three step zigzag. I'm going to make the stitch length, the width is five. I think that's big enough. And then my length is going to be like 1.4. I don't want it to be super close together. And let me just get my camera a little bit lower. See that fairly sh sharply. Let me move my self over here. Okay. All right. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take these shorts and I'm going to start on one hem edge. And the thing is, I have to make sure I don't sew through anything here. So I think I'm going to turn them so they're inside out and that way I can work from inside so I'm gonna put all of this under my presser foot until I get to the hem like this okay and then I'm gonna start sewing right here and basically I want to stitch right along the edge of that lining so let me just okay 
Alright, so you can see, I'm just going to sew right along the edge, and I'm just going to try to keep the shorts flat underneath the lining here. take my pins out as I come to them. I'm kind of excited because I really need some more sleep shorts. Um, All right, so Gary says cover stitch would be better on the serger. You have the ovation and lots more room for sewing a cover stitch. That is true. The cover stitch would work lovely. I just want to give people an option if they don't have a cover hem on their sewing on their serger. All right, so something is happening here. My fabric got stuck. Let me see why that's happening. So. That's annoying. Alright, let me try that. Alright, since I took it out, let me just show you how it's looking. You can see that that's a nice finish and then from the in from the wrong side you know you can see the zigzag um, but it it's making a nice flat finish here I don't know why it was getting hung up um, let me start over here again and see if we can get it to keep going <gasps> oh dear yeah something is wrong with my machine. All right, so let's take a look at what's happening. Um, my thread seems to be doing something funny here. Let me re-thread. Oh, maybe it fell out of the take-up lever. All right. Sometimes when I am in a hurry, I thread fast and I cause a problem. All right. I think we're going to be good now. Okay. All right. All right. I think that probably will fix whatever was going on. Let me just get this back under here. And I'm just going to start right there. Coming back to the other side here, the other hem. I don't know why. I think it's this vintage, this knit, when I tell you this knit is very old, I think the knit is getting sucked into my machine. So. I'm going to use this, not that, I'm going to use this, wait a minute, let me just use a scrap, I'm going to put a piece of paper under there to keep that from happening, let me see if that fixes it. Okay, alright, so I've got paper underneath the fabric. And that's keeping it from. All right. All right, so let's look and see what happened. Okay, so I put the paper here, and because it's a triple zigzag, it'll just pull right off. And of course, I can wash 
all the little pieces out. Um, but you can see, except for that little boo-boo I had, that makes a nice finish. Oh, Gary, um, okay, so Gary says there is, I think $2,200 for an ovation is a great deal, Gary, so I, I think I snag that if you want to, um, upgrade from the evolution. No, oh, don't give up on this, Elizabeth, see how I fixed it? It's all, it's all better. It's all better. This knit, I'm telling you, this knit is a funky, um, a funky knit that was made exclusively for. Um, I, it was made exclusively for Joanne Fabrics, like way back, way back when my friend Maurice used to work there. So, I would have to say this fabric is probably about, I want to say, 30 years old. So. <laughs> It could be that it's just having a hissy just because of its age. But you can see, all I did was put a piece of paper underneath the seam. Let's do another one, and I'll show you. So we're going to start on this side now. Okay, and I think just to... Keep it simple. I'm going to use my little piece of paper under there, so I'm just going to stick that right under where I'm sewing. See, there it is right there, the paper. And that will keep me from getting into trouble. I think I'm also using a... The needle I'm using is not a stretch needle, and the needle might be causing the problem, but I'm so close to being finished, I'm just going to keep going. All right. So again, we're just going to triple zigzag right along here. You know, and as we go, I want to make sure that my lining is laying flat. Yes, netwear. Knits are our friend. Okay, so I'm coming to the center back here, I believe. And then let me just organize this other side here. Like I said, I just want to make sure everything is laying nice and even. I think I lost my pin, so I'm just going to, I'm just smoothing it out across. So from here to here, okay. Yep, the minute I went off the paper, I could feel it sucking into the bobbin case. So if that happens, just use a piece of tissue paper, okay? So see, I ran out of paper, and it started acting up. So I'm going to peel this off so I can keep using the same little strip here. I don't think this knit has any spandex. I think it's 100% cotton. So it's really, um, I'm going to say it's like really malleable to the needle, like it gets sucked into the machine. All right, so I've got my paper back under there. And I've got nothing but the paper, see? I'll be able to go right all the way to the end on that one little strip of paper. Yes. All right. Let's look at it now. All right. Okay. Let's take a look at what we have. Okay. Oh, Elizabeth's asking about paper. This is this is um, paper that I had a pattern printed on. You could also use like the dotted paper. You could use 
tracing paper, you could use adding tape paper, you could use cop copier paper. Just keep in mind the thicker the paper, you know, the more you're going to have to pull it away. So see, now I'm pulling pulling it away. The triple zigzag is good though because it, it has three stitches in each direction. So you can see, like, I'm not going to put up with it not behaving, like literally. So let's look at this now. So this is my front. So this is how it's going to look. And you can see I've got little pieces of paper in here. Um, but basically, you know, once I throw that in the wash, all those little pieces of paper will disappear. Okay, so you have sort of a, you know, a little line of stitching going. Let me just show you here. So this is the front, so it goes from the hem right around to here, and then in the back, so let me just cut these little boo-boos. Okay, so in the back you have the same thing, it's going, let's make it a little bit bigger here, from the hem around. Now you can see here, you could make your back higher. Like if you wanted it to come up higher on your butt, you could totally do that as well. So basically, um, that's how you make a lining. And these are going to be sleep shorts for me. Um, anyway, so that's what I wanted to show today. Um, does anybody have any questions about making the lining? Let me turn it inside out. I'm really excited that the two Dianes are going to get together. I love that. I wish I lived in Virginia, too. I would get together with you. All right. So see here, you can see it from the inside. So this is the front, okay, and then through the legs to the back. Okay, so I think that makes a pretty comfortable um, lining. Um, and like I said, now you have a double layer of fabric along your inner thigh, which is nice too. So, you know, and then if I were to hem these, I could hem them up, you know, through both layers, you know, if I wanted to like that. So that's how the hem would look. Um, all right, so Sally says, Thank you, Jen. It looks great in the striped fabric. The stitching's almost disappeared. I mean, the stitching does kind of sink into the print. So, I mean, it really isn't that noticeable. But, like I said, if you were wearing these as shorts or yoga pants and you wanted to line, you know, and you wanted to line them, um, you would just have the stitching showing on the right side. But basically, I'm going to add an elastic to the top of this to create some sleep shorts. So that's what I'm going to be doing with these. Um, I don't know if you saw, but in my in the our Facebook group, I put a picture of my wild fabric. I have jazzy fabric. Let me show you what it looks like. Um, on my phone. All right, so it's in the dryer, or I would have it here. Um, to show you. So this print fabric is going to be my, my jazzy skirt, and the red is going to be my shorts for my new skirt. Um, and I don't know if I'm going to line those shorts or not, because it's going to be a regular skirt. But that's going to be my jazzy, jazzy, um, my jazzy skirt. So get ready for it. I'm, hope, I'm hoping it'll be finished by the end of the day. Um, okay, Elizabeth says, amazing, thank you. I'll have to watch from the beginning because I just came in late. Okay, and Elizabeth, if you have any questions, please let me know. And if you're on Facebook, click the link below this um, live stream to join our group. That way you can post pictures and interact with everybody in, in our group. 
and also inspire them with your makes. So feel free to, you know, join me. My Facebook group is called J Stern Designs Fit Sew so, Embroider. And in case you're wondering about the embroider part, I am going to be adding new embroidery projects on Sundays. I've just been extremely busy also making new classes. I'm having a hard time getting everything done. Um, well, Mary's excited about my my pretty colors, and Diane says I'll have to step up a notch and outdo that jazzy fabric. <laughs> well, actually, Diane, I went to look for the fabric. Um, Diane made an amazing tank top in my class last week, and it's sort of a black with a blue um, dotted stripes. Very cool fabric. I went to find that, and I couldn't find it fast, so I ended up getting this one instead. Um, and actually, I ran to Joanne Fabrics because I potsed around and I didn't order anything in time to get here for today. Um, if you were in my, if you were in my skirt, uh, in my tank top class um, for Fabric Mart Fabric last Friday, I'm doing a bonus class at three o'clock today because the. Um, I didn't set the recording up properly and so you really can't see what I'm doing. So if anybody wants to join me, or if anybody here is, was in the tank top class and they want to join me at 3 o'clock, I think Julie sent the link out to everybody. Um, and actually what I'll be doing in that class is finishing my polka dot tank. So I'll be working on that, helping anybody who needs help because I screwed up the recording. Um, so that's... Um, that's my little story on that. Um, and I think I'm all done for today. Oh, Diane just, oh, thank you, Diane. That was very nice. Um, okay, so um, I just want to thank everybody for joining me today. And actually, this is a pretty short one. I've been running oh, well over an hour during the sew-alongs. Um, I am going to set up a poll during the week for um, upcoming topics. So if you have a topic, um, please let me know. Um, you know, you can email me if you have topics, post topics that you might want to see on Fat Fit Fridays below this video, and I'll include them in the poll or I'll put them on my list. Um, Netwear wants to know when I'm teaching the squirt class again. Well, actually, I am teaching it for the Walnut Creek ASG on the 28th of August. It's going to be a four-hour class. And I, I think if you, if you email me at jsterndesigns, I'll put my little email in, the, in, our, in our chat here. Um, so let me just... All right, so here's J Stern Designs 37 at Gmail. All right, so if you email me here, I can get you in touch with whoever needs, um, if anyone would like information about that squirt class. Um, it's an ASG event, but I think they allow members who are, I mean, they allow people who are not ASG members to join the workshop, I believe. I can check and I can get you in contact with them. So I am doing that on the 27th, um, 28th of this month. Alright, so I think I'm going to wrap it up. I'm going to go down to the dryer and get my new squirt fabric cut out. I'm going to try to sew that and also work on my polka dot tank top um, at 3 o'clock with my class. So um, I hope you guys have a wonderful weekend. I know in Connecticut we finally have some warmth. It's been like 70s, 60s and 70s the past few days, um, which has been kind of nice, but I, I'm kind of excited to float with some um, warmer weather. So I will be in my pool floating um, after I figure out dinner tonight. Um, oh, you, oh, ha, uh, Netware says I'm an ASG member. Okay, so just email me. Um, at my jsterndesigns37 at gmail and I will get you in touch with um, the people who are organizing that workshop and I'm, I, I'm, I'm guessing you can probably get in there. 
um, anyway, um, thank you guys for joining me. If you have any questions about lining your shorts, please let me know. And like I said, I will put a poll up both here on, on um, my YouTube community tab and also in our Facebook group for um, up to upcoming topics you may want to start working, you know, you might have something you want to start working on as it summer is winding down. So, um, you know, because I don't have a topic for next week, so I'm looking for suggestions, I guess is what I'm saying. So, if you have suggestions, put them in the comments and also look for the poll either um, on my community tab right here on my channel or in our Facebook group. All right. So I hope you enjoyed this little tutorial and I hope you have a wonderful rest of your day. Um, I think what I will do, I think what I'll do is I'll put um, a PDF of this lovely lining for the um, shorts in our group, our Facebook group. So if you don't want to draft it yourself, you'll at least have a starting shape to um, work from. So I will do that after I get off. And then, um, you know, let me know if you have any, any questions. And um, have a nice weekend. I will be doing a follow-up for Fit Tip Tuesday on adjusting the width of the crotch wedges if you need to make more room. I forgot to include one of the ways that you might need to adjust the crotch wedge, so that's what's going to be coming up for Fit Tip Tuesday, and I am I am working on um, my embroidery project, probably not this weekend because I'm teaching for stitches um, Saturday and Sunday, So, um, but I will definitely get embroidery going for next Sunday, I promise. I'll put something up if it kills me. Um, so I really want to get my Sunday embroidery days going. All right. So thank you guys for joining me. Um, and thank you, Diane. And I will, um, I will see you guys really soon. Check the group for, I'll put post up pictures of my lined, um, shorts with the pattern piece. All right. So have a lovely rest of your day, ladies and gentlemen. I will see you later. Thank you for joining me. Have a nice weekend. Bye-bye.